Solving Problems with Systems of Equations, Lesson 8.2c. Mr. Wilson found a treasure map. On the back of the map was a riddle that needed to be solved to pinpoint the location of the treasure. At the bottom, there are coordinates for points on the map. Here's the riddle. There's a secret treasure to be found. Solve the clues and dig deep down. Draw a line through A and B, then another through C and D. The intersection you will see, it's the point and the key. X marks the spot for where to dig. To find gold coins, this treasure's big. And it's showing ordered pairs for point A, B, C, and D. Using the coordinates, Mr. Wilson plots the points and labels them. Point A is at 5 for x, negative 2 for y, so it's right here. And point B is at 3 for x, negative 5 for y, so it's down here. Point C is at 6 for x, 1 for y, so it's right there. And D is at negative 4, negative 3, so it's right there. Following the directions, Mr. Wilson draws a line through A and B, then another line through C and D. Using the points, he uses the slope formula to find the slope of each line. For line AB, this is how you would write it. We would write AB with a line that has arrows on both sides. That's line AB. The slope would be the second Y minus the first Y. So it would be negative 5 minus 2 and the second x minus the first x, so we'd have 3 minus 5. That's going to give us a slope of 3 halves. For line CD, we would have a slope of 2 fifths. Mr. Wilson writes equations in slope-intercept form describing the line through points A and B and the line through points C and D. The line through points A and B, he uses the slope 3 halves and a point to find B. So we know that it was given that point B was at 3 for X, negative 5 for Y. We're looking for the Y-intercept B. Using slope-intercept form, we plug in those values. We have 3 halves for our slope. We have 3 for X and negative 5 for Y. And we multiply. 3 halves times 3 is 9 halves which simplifies to 4 and 5 tenths. Now we have negative 5 is equal to 4 and 5 tenths plus b. So remember, we're trying to find the value b. So we can subtract 4 and 5 tenths from both sides of the equation. If we have a negative 5 and we subtract another 4 and 5 tenths, we're going to have negative 9 and 5 tenths. That is b. Now we have our equation. It's y is equal to our slope 3 halves x minus 9.5. For line through C and D, he uses the slope 2 fifths that we found, he found, and a point. So we can use point C, 6 for x, 1 for y. We're going to plug it into this equation. We have 2 fifths for our slope, 6 for x, 1 for y. We multiply and get 12 fifths, and we can simplify that, and it becomes 2 and 2 fifths. We can also write it as a decimal as 2 and 4 tenths, and we subtract 2 and 4 tenths from each side and get that b is equal to a negative 1 and 4 tenths. Now we have our equation. Mr. Wilson has his equation. y is equal to 2 fifths x minus 1 and 4 tenths. His two equations are a system of equations that he can solve algebraically. We have our two equations. And since y is equal to this right side, we can use this entire side of the equation, this expression, 3 halves x minus 9.5 for y. And we can plug it into this equation. Now, we have a fraction here and we have decimals here. So, Mr. Wilson, he wrote the fractions as decimals, so all the terms were in the same format. You don't want to have them mixed. You want to either have them all fractions or all decimals. So. We've got 3 halves, which is 1 and 5 tenths, or 1 and a half. And what we do is we set this side 
this 1.5x minus 9.5 as y in our equation. And 2 fifths is equal to 4 tenths, so we have 4 tenths x minus 1 and 4 tenths. We have our y, and first thing we can do to isolate x is subtract 4 tenths x from each side of the equation. That's going to create a zero pair here and eliminate it. So we only have a negative 1.4 on this side. And on this side, we're going to have 1.1x minus 9.5. Now, we can add 9.5 to both sides of the equation. Since this is a negative, a minus 9.5, we add 9.5, make a zero pair. Now, we have 1 1 tenth x is equal to 8.1. We divide both sides, each side, by this coefficient, 1.1. That's going to give the same numerator and denominator on this side, so we have 1x, and on this side, as a decimal, we're going to get 7 and 36 hundredths. Now that Mr. Wilson found the value of x, he can use it to find y. We know that x is equal to 7 and 36 hundredths. We have our system of equation written in all decimals. We can plug in the 7 and 36 hundredths into this second equation, and we get y is equal to 2.944 minus 1.4. When we multiplied the 4 tenths by 7 and 36 hundredths, we got 2.944. Remember, we have 3 hops in the equation, so we're going to have 3 hops in the product. When we do 2.944 minus 1.4, we get 1.544. So we know that x is 7.36, and we know that y is 1.544. The intersection of line AB and line CD is at the point 7 and 36 hundredths for x, and 1 and 544 thousandths for y. This is where Mr. Wilson decided to dig for the treasure. Now I'm going to walk you through one that's a little tricky, so please try to follow me. A company rents moving vans for x dollars per day plus y dollars for each mile driven. Dave rented a van for two days drove it 100 miles, and spent $110. Sam rented a van for one day, drove it 240 miles, and spent $150. Write equations to represent Dave's and Sam's expenses and solve the system for X and Y. So our equations are going to be 2X, because he has two days at those dollars, plus 100Y, that's how many miles he drove, and it's equal to $110. For Sam, we have x, because it's just one day, plus 240y is equal to $150. So we can rewrite this equation to be x equals something. We have x plus 240y equals 150. If we subtract 240y from each side, That'll create a zero pair here and eliminate it. So we're going to have x equals instead of y equals. We're not putting it in slope-intercept form. On this side, we have 150 minus 240y. So now we know x is equal to this amount. We know that x is equal to 150 minus 240y. Now we use the right side as x in the first equation, 2x plus 100y equals 110. So we're going to put this as our x. We know it's equal to x. We're going to use it as x. We're going to substitute it in. So now, instead of 2x, we have 2 times 150 minus 240y. We need to distribute this 2 into the parentheses. We're going to get 300 minus 480y plus 100y equals 110. We can combine these like terms. We can combine these together and get a negative 380y. Now we have 300 minus 380y is equal to 110. We could subtract 300 from both sides of the equation. We're looking for the value of y. That's going to create a zero pair here and eliminate it. And when we subtract it on this side, we get a negative 190. Now we have negative 380y is equal to negative 190. We divide both sides by this coefficient, negative 380. 
same numerator and denominator, we have 1y. And when we divide a negative 190 by a negative 380, we get a positive 1 half. Now, we can write it as a decimal as 0 0.5 or 0 0.50. Now we have the value for y is 50 cents because we're dealing with money, aren't we? We know the value of y is 50 cents. So into our equation, our second equation, we put this 0 0.5 for y and we solve for x. We have x plus 240 times 0.5 is equal to 150 and we can subtract this 120 from each side. That's going to eliminate it, make a zero pair, and we're left with x is equal to 30. Now we have our solution for our system. We have 30 and 5 tenths or 51 hundredths. Since this is money, that means the van, our, the charge per day was $30 and it's 50 cents per mile to rent the van. So you're going to see, depending on the equation, that we don't have to write it in slope-intercept form, and we don't have to solve it for y right away. We could solve it for x and then y, or y and then x. It depends on the equation. And the more you do them, the easier they will get because of your practice. Now before we go, I wanted to give you a little hint. When you start doing the homework and the problems in the back of the module, in the back of the lesson, Problem number 15 on page 242 has given some of my subscribers some problems. All the coordinates have a denominator of 3. What you do is, when you're drawing your grid, is you draw the increments in thirds and you can use 3 units to be 1. So that would be 1 third, 2 thirds, 1 whole, 1 and 1 third, 1 and 2 thirds, 2 whole. See what I mean? So that when you want to plot a point like a negative four-thirds for x and two-thirds for y, it's very easily done because that would be four-thirds for x and two-thirds for y. That will help you. We're finished with lesson 8.2 and we're moving on to 8.3. Well, we're going to learn about solving a linear system by adding. Remember, if you ever get confused, go back and watch a video again or go back to an earlier lesson, like this is 8.2c, go back to 8.2a and b. Have a great day, and join me for 8.3. Bye.